My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I'm going to show you how to answer some of the paper two questions in IB chemistry. This is a paper two question. It's actually a standard level paper two question in stoichiometry. But it has some interesting concepts in it. And so it is of value to both standard level and higher level students. Essentially, you're asked first to calculate the empirical formula of the hydrocarbon. So there is a way of doing that, which is carbon and hydrogen, 85.6, 14.4. And you divide those by the atomic masses of the various things. I'm going to use 12, but you could use the figures from the periodic table, which are slightly different, 12.01, and 1 there. And that comes to 7.1, and that comes to 14.4, and then you divide that by 7.1, divide that by 7.1, and you get the ratio of 1 to 2. Therefore, the empirical formula formula equals CH2. Then we go to this part, which is asking you to calculate the molar mass. And as soon as you see temperature, pressure, volume, you know you're dealing with the equation PV equals NRT. And in order to calculate the molar mass, given a one gram sample, you realize you need to work out what is N. Because everything else is given. The pressure is given, the volume is given, the temperature is given, and the R, the constant, is given. So, the value of N equals PV over RT. So, let's say N equals pressure, 1.01, 1.01 times 10 to the 5. The unit of pressure in this equation is Pascal. Pascal, so you put all of them in. If it was given to you as kilopascals, which it might be, then you have to convert it to Pascal. If it was given to you in atmospheres, you would have to convert it to Pascals. So it's Pascals uh, times the volume. Now, the volume is given to you as three, the volume is given to you in decimeters cubed. You have to convert that to meters cubed. This is something that students get a little bit confused with. The volume in this equation, this equation, is meters cubed. And that equals a thousand decimeters cubed. It also equals a million centimeters cubed. So if you are given the volume in decimeters cubed, you divide by a thousand. If you're given the volume in centimeters cubed, you divide by a million. If in a different type of question, you might be asked to calculate the volume using this equation, then you have to realize the final volume is given to you in meters cubed. If you're asked to calculate it in decimeters cubed, you have to multiply that figure by a thousand. If you're asked to give that volume in centimeters cubed, you have to multiply that figure by a million. Okay, so then we divide that by the value of R, which is 8.31, and the temperature, 273. Fortunately, it is given to you in K. And that equals, you do the calculation, and that equals 0 0.0178. And that is moles. And you write that down, moles. So you've got that far. Now, to convert that to the molar volume, you know that one mole equals one gram one gram divided by 0 0.0178 if this is one gram then one gram divided by that would give the value of the mole which equals 56.2 grams per mole 
So that is the molar mass. Molar mass. We now have to deduce the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon and we know two things. We know that the empirical formula is CH2 and that the molar, the relative molecular mass of CH2 is 14. We know that the relative molecular mass of the final formula is 56. So therefore what we do is we divide 56 by 14 and that comes to 4. Therefore the molecular formula is CH2 times 4 which equals C4H8. Then we go to why is the incomplete conversion of hydrocarbon harmful to humans and we simply say that incomplete combustion incomplete combustion gives carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide destroys carbon monoxide destroys hemoglobin in blood hemoglobin in blood okay and that when you're answering a question like this explain and they say two points they always are looking for two sentences or two ideas. So incomplete combustion gives carbon monoxide, that's the first idea. Then you say carbon monoxide destroys the hemoglobin in blood. There are different ways of saying the second sentence. You could simply say carbon monoxide is toxic to humans. Uh, but I always like this particular phrase because it, it's very specific. It does destroy the hemoglobin in blood. If you found this YouTube video helpful, then please so you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.